There's another son who's at home, and you would think would be equally joyful that this one son has finally got it, has returned to the father's arms, who embraces his forgiveness. But what's his problem? His problem is he's resentful because he has been keeping God's laws. He has been doing these things. He just didn't enjoy it. Is there really much of a difference? You know, this, this man obeyed and, and followed, and maybe we'll say sometimes, here we are too. I have been good. I have lived a good life. I have been obedient. I have been kind. Just didn't enjoy it. That's also pretty sad. Oh, that this story would continue and that there could be a third son, right? Well, I'm happy to tell you today, this account does go on. Not in this chapter or in the next. It continues today. As we look at the potential that we have to, to completely dismiss God or to resent God for the life that he asks us to lead, instead to stop and to consider the depth of God's commitment to us. What that means. I have time. I have talents. I have treasures. I have forgiveness. And I have a God who's committed to me enough to guide me in using these things. I have a God who will never let me go. And instead of seeing that as a reason to run, as a reason to try to find a better way, as a, as a reason to stay, to embrace his laws, to embrace his promises, to embrace everything that is my relationship with him. Do they listen to him? He'll teach us to do that. The prodigal son, the reckless son, it's part of our sinful nature. But the thankful son, that has been given us to us too. And we focus on the commitment of the Father and share that commitment with him. Amen. And now, May the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Once again, please rise. We turn to page nine, where we join the singing together, creating. so richly blessed the work of our hands. We now ask you to receive the fruit of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We now take this time to watch this month's edition of our Wells Connect.
President Mark Schrader. As the president of our Senate, I have the privilege of participating in mission work all over the world, seeing God at work in a totally different cultural setting can be a life-changing experience, invigorating our sense of purpose as Christians. A new program offered by Wells is designed to bring those experiences to lay people. It's called Mission Journeys. These members of St. Paul Lutheran are planning a trip, a trip with a purpose. In a few weeks' time, they'll travel to Arizona to work at the Wells Apache Mission, which lasts about a week, is part of a new sit by program called Mission Journeys. I think one of the really big blessings of Mission Journeys is it allows lay people to be involved in a way that they might not otherwise feel they could be involved. Um, it gives them the opportunity to connect personally and firsthand with one of our mission fields. Jill Doering, a lay person, is coordinating this particular mission journey. A reminder that it's not just pastors and teachers who have a role to play in reaching out with the gospel. We've had a number of teams that have gone where we've had lay people actually be the team leaders and the called workers have walked alongside of them um, and allowed them to be the leaders. And this is just beneficial for our churches as a whole. In advance of the journey, several workshops like this help participants prepare for the culture they will be visiting and the mission work that needs to be done. We're not down there just to take pictures. We're not down there to just say hi. We're down there to help. We're down there to be a team and then to do whatever work they want us to do. The mission fields themselves and the congregations are, are coming to us and saying, this is what we need. And we're trying to match up a team um, to those needs. The group based at St. Paul came to the Apache mission partly to help with preparations for the mission's 125th anniversary. Since St. Paul was also celebrating 125 years, it was an opportunity to see the parallels, how God's work is the same despite cultural differences. It's a great opportunity for me to be reminded um, that heaven is gonna be filled with brothers and sisters of all races, nations, language, tribes, and people. Once back at St. Paul, the team made plans to connect with their congregation, to report on the experience, and encourage other lay people to consider similar mission journeys. Because you have connections within your congregation and they're going to see what you did, hopefully hear the excitement and the joy and the love that you had doing this, that it will grow that within your congregation too. I'm willing, they're actually talking about maybe sending while some mission journeys travel to distant world mission locations, other opportunities are available closer within the United States. So there's a mission journey opportunity to fit the resources of almost any group. In our prayers this morning, we say a prayer on behalf of the family of Janice Perfilio, uh, the mother of our good friend Mary Lou Perfilio, who was called to her eternal glory earlier this week. So we thank God for this and ask for comfort for the family. Please rise as we join in the prayer of the church. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your commitment which gives us confidence to live our lives knowing that we are tied to you for eternity. We thank you for the love that you showed to Janice during her life, all that you accomplished through her, all that, that you did for her and allowed her to see. We thank you above all for bringing her to faith and holding before her eyes the glory eternal that is hers now. We thank you for comforting her and strengthening her and using her, but above all for now giving her the glory that you promised to us all. We ask that you be with the family during this time. Help them to see, as much as is humanly possible, the glory she now enjoys, so that they may find comfort and look ahead to the day when they join her as well. 
We ask that you guide us and sustain us, protect us, and hold us in your hands always. We ask all of this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we continue with our next hymn, 384, By Grace I'm Saved. God, 
Grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. As we continue with our final hymn, 610, now thank we all our God.
have last night. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we dried off, a little cold on and everything. So we're doing good this morning. We're already cleaned already. So I know. What are you going to order when the dogs are around? Yeah. I had that one a few years ago. What if you were here? I had to get the cap up at the border. I know. I couldn't get near her at all. Once she didn't have a cap, you walked up to her scratcher, she was fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> See you later, Anna. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> 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 have a good day.